Okay, am I on? So I'm gonna go ahead and put my clothes on while I'm up here. So I apologize, I uh, last minute decided to mic up, but go team red, white, and blue, anyone? <laughs> so I'm not well known for my professionalism, so I apologize for that. Most Ranger school graduates aren't. Sir, where are you at? Are you still here? Okay. Um, so everybody here has been in the military for over a day, right? So you know the fundamentals, you know the fundamentals of a good military story, right? It needs to be 10% truth. Uh, chances are, if it's a training story, it occurred during a rainstorm, thunderstorm, lightning storm, fill in the blank, right? And every good military story starts with, so no shit, there I was. <laughs> sorry for anybody who gets offended, I'm sorry. I myself. So no shit, there I was. So um, my ranger buddy, his name's Thor. Guys, I'm sorry, but ladies, you can imagine what Thor looks like, right? <laughs> so I'm the 240 gunner, and I am done with the mission. We are headed to the patrol base. It is awesome. Thor's got my back, he's got my extra barrel, my tripod, my extra ammo. I'm just carrying a 27-pound baby in front of me, and it starts storming. Did I mention we're in Georgia? Has anybody ever been Fort Benning, Georgia area? Let me see. All right. So the ground is made of clay. Do you know what clay is like when it rains? Slip and slide. So of course, not only is it raining, not only am I carrying the 240, not only are my boots the same boots that were issued to me before Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001, booyah, I'm walking through a slip and slide under nods. I gave up company command in 2007. The last time I had to wear night vision was mm, like 2004. So I'm not really good at it. And I am riding these little hills and undulations in the ground. I am all over the place. I am falling, toes, knees, gun. I'm a complete mess of myself. And because it's raining, and it's Georgia, and it's April, it is cold. So we finally get to our patrol base. Thor's trying to be a gentleman, help set up my poncho, so I got a place to lay down. He's being real sweet. Doesn't matter, everything's underwater. The RI leaves us to set up our patrol base. Hey, I'll be back in an hour to critique you guys, give you your grade. And then he, come, he, he leaves, and then the ranger instructor, the RI, comes right back and goes, you know what, guys? Just don't die. Just don't die. Like, I don't care what you guys got to do, but just stay warm enough. I don't want to get fired. Don't die. <laughs> this is awesome. So Thor and I are in our little fighting position, and this is where we're going to be for the night. Since the RI said don't die, I'm thinking I get to eat and sleep, because there's no way in hell I'm cleaning this weapon right now. I look around, cold rain beating on everybody's head. Each fighting position is a mound of three men. They're in this snuggle pile thing, trying to keep warm. I'm like, dude, Thor, hook me up. <laughs> I can't move. I'm dummy corded to the stupid 240, and I'm, I'm laying there in this puddle. He's like, I can't. What do you mean you can't? Like, there's dudes snuggling. He goes, I can't. My wife. I'm like, really? We've been through all this together, and now you're going to be sexist? <laughs> so the question all these guys ask, the average age at Ranger School is 21, 22. Why the hell would a 37, now 38, mother of two with a career, not a job, a career, want to go to Ranger School with a bunch of 20-something-year-old young infantry guys. Well, to explain that, I got to explain this. Who am I? So some of you have probably read something about me. I've been in a few, I don't know, magazines, newspaper articles, so I'm really sorry because my story is really boring. I'm just a mom. I'm just a wife. I'm a military spouse as well. These are my brag pictures. I totally kicked her butt in the jiu-jitsu tournament, so, you know. Um, and then, of course, I do CrossFit, but I'm an athlete, I'm a hunter, I'm a mom, I'm, I'm normal. I just, I just had this itch. 
I had this thing I had to do. The reason why I had to do it, it wasn't because I wanted to spend the rest of my life talking to people or I was looking to change the military. Honestly, if you had asked me on the day I signed up to go to ranger school what I thought about integrating combat arms, I would have said that's a dumb idea. I know that's not what's expected, but I never wanted to be infantry. I never wanted to be armor. I never wanted to be field artillery. I never had these dreams that were crushed because I was a female. What I did have is a deployment during the initial actions in Afghanistan. I was in Kandahar. I was one of three females in all of Kandahar. And we were supporting Operation Anaconda. Now, a bit of a history lesson if you're not familiar with it. Look it up after this. It's, it was a huge action early in the war. Well, I'm in Task Force Rakasan, and I've got a one star asking my battalion commander for three of his best combat heavy engineers. Now, engineer branch has changed a lot in the last 15, 16 years, but at that time you had combat heavy engineers, were your, which were your construction guys. That was us. We built roads, we did minefield clearing operations, uh, we did horizontal and vertical construction. So we had to main, build and maintain a dirt runway so we could do resupply for special forces units that were moving forward to be operators and do what operators do. Well, they wanted my three best male soldiers. And I'm not saying she was one of my best, or I'm not saying she was my best, but she was one of my best. I had this young female specialist who, I swear to God, she was MacGyver reincarnate. So I know who's older in this room. <laughs> Okay, so for you younger people, MacGyver was this really cheesy show where the guy literally could fix anything and make a bomb out of duct tape and bubble gum. Well, that was her. We had a broken dough. She took, she took the uh, divider from a Joe box. For those of you who don't know what a Joe box is, it's, uh, it's a toolbox. And you open the drawers and there's these little thin pieces of metal. She took it out, made something, and she fixed the bulldozer, literally. I don't know how she did it. It was magic. It was amazing. But if I had somebody who had to go to an austere area, operate local Afghani equipment, fix it when it breaks down, and continue to do support for, for this dirt run field, runway, I wanted it to be her. She, she, was, she was on my short list to go. So I went back to my battalion commander, smart young lieutenant. Hey, sir, do you want my three best soldiers or do you want my three best male soldiers? Poplinski, just, just give me three names, you know? And, and so I come back, and I'm like, she's going. He's like, no, she can't. And this isn't a story that made me bitter. I wasn't mad because I couldn't send this one soldier. I just didn't understand why. She was an engineer, combat heavy, horizontal platoon, one of my best equipment operators, and she could be a mechanic, too. She could be two soldiers and maybe keep somebody else from going into harm's way or further into harm's way. Why can't I send her? And that's always been in the back of my head. Now, if you're anything like me, I'm very type A, and when I see a problem, I get married to it. When I say I get married to this problem, it comes home with me, it sleeps with me, it eats breakfast with me, it ticks me off, it, it makes me happy. I'm literally married to the issue. But as I go on in my military career, my male engineer peers get opportunities that I don't get. I actually, um, anybody here, Force 21, remember those days? Okay, so we transitioned where engineer units were directly attached and a bunch of the engineer company commands changed and were rebilleted so that they could only be male. So here I am as a company commander and now I can't command a combat unit because even though those are the same units I was a lieutenant in, they're now only male. So they're slotted in, in such a way where I had to go elsewhere. I actually took two ordnance company commands because I didn't want to wait for a non-combat unit because I was an engineer. I was a combat engineer. I do minefield clearing operations. I'm out there in the stuff with the dudes. My secondary mission is to fight as infantry. I'm an engineer. I wanted to go do that stuff. And if I couldn't do that, I wasn't even going to try. So again, this issue that I'm married to is still growing in the back of my head. 
I get out of the Army completely in 2007, not because I didn't love my Army. I have always loved my Army. But I loved my husband more, and I married a Marine. A very big Marine, yes, he's six foot nine, just in case anybody was wondering. Um, they grow them big in Texas. We've heard all the jokes. <laughs> so my husband gets off active duty, joins the reserves, and I take a five-year break from the military so that we're no longer getting company commands together, battalion commands together, because a marriage does not work when you're both trying to command each other. <laughs> During that process, I actually fall five years behind my peers, which ends up being a really good thing, because when I, this opportunity comes up to go to ranger school, you have to be a major or below. So while my peers are pitting lieutenant colonel, I'm still a major, and I can still have the opportunity to go. So, NCOs are the backbone of the Army, hold oh. Wow, that was weak, try again. Oh, there we go. So, my Sergeant Major calls me, and like any good, uh, any good officer, I answer the phone, and he says, hey, uh, you know they're opening up Ranger School to women. And I said, well, that's nice, Sergeant Major. Click. <laughs> I go back and sit down and eat dinner, and he calls back, he's like, no, seriously. A couple people in, in DC who thought, you know, you're, you're a competitive shooter, you're a competitive martial artist, you're a competitive crossfitter. You've got some tactical experience. We think you'd be perfect for this job. Yep. We're gonna do this now. Way, I have a big girl voice, but. Okay. Are we working? In the back? Give me thumbs up. Okay. Um, short story long. Sorry, Major. Tells me I need to do it. I tell him I like room service. I'm working for Shell Oil Company. I'm working in South Texas on an asset in the Eagleford uh, formation. If you don't know anything about it, it doesn't matter. It's not that big of a deal. But we have a King Air that flies down, so when I need to go to my project site, I get up a little early, get on the plane, get flown down there, have my few meetings, get back on the plane before the end of the day, come home and eat dinner with my family. This is kind of the life I'm used to now. I put this green suit on one week in a month, two weeks out of the year. I I'm done sleeping in the mud. So, of course, I explain this to everyone who's trying to get me to go, and my Sergeant Major does the second best thing when you're trying to get an idea planted in my head. And he calls my husband. <laughs> and the two of them kind of fixed and flanked me on this, because at dinner, I just made a nice healthy dinner, sitting at the table with my children, my husband goes, why not? I'm like, what do you mean, why not? Why? He goes, yeah, but you've had this problem, you've had this issue, you know, be, be the change you want, blah, 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 quote, 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 cheesy, cheesy, cheesy. No, baby, I'm not doing this. I'm old. There's hundreds of girls out there that are physically capable and they're young and they, they're full-time army. They want to make a name for themselves. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in that place in my life anymore. He goes, what if you say no and nobody does it? How are you going to look your kids in the eye? <laughs> if you see an issue in your army, granted he's a Marine, in your army, and you're not willing to do what it takes to fix it. Well, damn. <laughs> so like every good red-blooded American, I made a huge critical life decision, and I took it straight to Facebook. <laughs> Am I wrong? Like, you're like, hey, I'm getting married. Who knows first? Your Facebook friends. So I go to Facebook, and I write this really long, hey, if you don't support me, unfriend me now. I'm going to do this for all the right reasons, and I don't want glory, blah, 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 blah. Words, words, words. You know, the funniest thing out of that is, of course, they're my Facebook friends, so they tell me all this great, encouraging stuff. You're perfect for this. You are the person who's supposed to do this. Go get them, girl. You know, some you're a badass comments and all those, you know, 
everything that's expected. Then my husband's lifelong friend writes on there, why are you doing this? At this point in your life, it's time to put down your dreams and raise up your children. So I get my husband using my children against me, so I go. And I get a friend using my children against me, so I don't go. But she put the best phrase in there. And she said, if you miss the little things when your kids are little, they won't come to you with the big things when your kids are big. Damn. Okay, well, I'm... How do you argue with that? But the interesting part about that is when I was recycling, when I missed my son's seventh birthday, when I missed my daughter swimming across the pool for the first time, when I missed my daughter learning how to ride bike, I thought of this girl or this woman saying, if you miss the small things, they won't come to you with the big things. And her saying that allowed me, before I ever went to ranger school, to reconcile with that concept because I didn't think I was missing the little things. Because my husband got to be there for it. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are parents in here and how many, how many parents do I have in the room? Mothers, fathers, whatever, adopted, okay. So, typically, who's there for all those big moments? Who plans the birthday parties? Is it dad? Mm, it's usually mom, at least in my house. Who's, who's there making sure that, you know, the kids learn this and do their homework? A lot of times it's, it's mom in a traditional household. Well, for six months it was dad. And I've been back for eight or nine months, and sometimes it hurts me, but guess what? Those kids go to dad first sometimes. Those kids get skinned knees, and they don't necessarily come straight to mommy. Now, that's hard as a mother, but that's awesome as a wife. By me missing that section of their lives, I got to accomplish something, and for selfish reasons, I'm proud of that. But for an even greater reason, I'm super proud of my husband, who was in battalion command, who owns his own business, who supported me and wanted me to go to this school, who wanted me to throw my hat in the ring. He's now the best father that I know. And guys, I'm sure some of you are amazing out there, but. I've got a husband for six months, was a single dad, owned his own business, and was in battalion command. Boom! <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> we'll just end on that. Okay, I, I know because this room is a, um, predominantly people in uniform, you probably already know this, but this is just a little overview of Ranger School. Um, basically, this is a lot of words to say it really sucks. Um, the average graduation, about 39, the updated stats are 39% of the people who start Ranger School actually graduate. So it, just to, to look at the number, or no, I'm sorry, it was 41%. Um, it's supposed to be a 61-day school. I just want to point out that I took 181 days to graduate. So I'm thinking if it, the typical Ranger School sto student walks 200 miles, I'm probably walked about 600 miles uh, with 75 pounds on my back. So I just want to throw that out there so that if anybody wonders if I was too weak to make it, I want to let you know that they did not make the mountain shorter. They did not make the sand less crappy. Um, and yes, I did walk probably close to 600 miles. Um, yeah, just a brief overview. Next slide, please. So I've only got a little bit of time with you guys today. And so I wanted to leave as much as I can for uh, Q&A. But I wanted to talk about some key points. Um, these are my personal favorite quotes. I explained why I went to the school. I went to the school because I wanted the adjective deleted. I didn't want to be a female engineer officer. I wanted to just be an engineer officer and have the same opportunities as every other engineer officer, period. I really wasn't fighting for any sort of equality. I wasn't, I wasn't even looking at the big picture. I literally would answer that question, hey, what do you think about women in the infantry? I don't know. I, I don't really think about it. Now I do because this is a conversation I have with people quite regularly. Um, I have opinions, I have discussion points, but at that point in my life, that wasn't, that wasn't my goal. I just wanted to be 
the best engineer officer I could possibly be. Boom, chicka boom. Okay, so we're gonna try this again. So my story changed though. My why changed significantly while I was at Ranger School. I got recycled twice. Uh, eight of us made, eight women out of the 19 that showed up on day one, made it to, through the end of rap week and made it to Darby. Okay, so that's the first field exercises, first graded stuff. They recycled all eight of us. What your opinion is of that, what, what you think of professionalism, what you want to talk about the school, that's a different topic. Eight of us were going to restart. So eight of us went through a second time. And at the end of that second trip through Darby, we were all told we were going home for good. We were done. And the battalion commander said to us, hey, just like we give all the males, we'll give you the opportunity to come back, go to home station for six months, and then you can return and try again. And I looked at him, I'm like, there's no way in hell, because there's only one integrated class. I will do whatever I have to do to stay. Well, to make a short story long, three of us were offered an opportunity to start day one, but we had to do a quick like mini PT test. We had to be able to do 49 perfect push-ups in the office, right then and there on the spot. So the three of us did it. The, there was a couple males who were also offered a day one restart with us, and one said he didn't want to, and the other one couldn't do his 49 push-ups. So I restart, along with Shay and Chris, and I call home. They give me an opportunity to call home. My husband, reading all the newspaper articles, said, okay, well, I'll pick you up at the airport, just tell me when. I said, hey, baby, I'm, I'm not coming home. I'm, uh, I'm six weeks into a nine-week school, and I'm starting day zero in three weeks. You can imagine the reaction I got from him. After the explicatives, he said, why do you think it'll be different this time? How do you think you'll get a go now when you didn't get a go the first two attempts? And I said, baby, it's not about getting the tab anymore. Each and every soldier I meet now holds their female soldiers to a higher standard. Every ranger instructor I met said, wow, damn, Jasser, we didn't think you could do that. You're old. I couldn't have done this at 37. I got fellow students that were 19, 20, 21 years old saying, why are you here? Why are you doing this? And I got to have these great conversations with these young men that are going back to the force and in a year or five years or 10 years, they're gonna be NCOs, they're gonna have females below them and they're gonna hold those females to the same standard that they hold their males. They were, each and every one of them individually, because of their interactions with some females who, for whatever reason, wanted to try something new, they were deleting the adjectives and they were starting to look at us as soldiers. So that was my win. That's where I was gonna, why I was gonna stay at Ranger School even though I kept getting recycled. It wasn't about the tab anymore. So then, starting day zero means I had to go through rap week all over again. Rap week is the extensive physical requirements of the school. The road march, the PT test, the five mile run, chin ups, obstacle courses, et cetera, et cetera. It's the physical stuff you have to pass. Now I will tell you that going through as a 37 year old who's had hip surgery, Yes, I've had hip surgery, and by this time, I already had a torn ligament in my left shoulder, and I had some sort of back spasming that was occurring at this time. My body was broken down. Two meals a day and two to four hours of sleep at night was not enough to keep my old body running as well as it used to. Prior to going to ranger school, I was working with a nutritionist, a physical therapist, a massage therapist, and I had a, a personal trainer. So needless to say, I was really nervous about starting rap week all over again. At the end of rap week, we lost 
100 men on day one, give or take. March. The road march is the last thing you do. So it's 12 miles with 35 pounds of gear plus water. And we talk about plus water. Plus water is nine quarts of water. So it's basically a second rock. I mean, that's another 15 pounds right there. So I finished the road march, and I happened to finish in the first 20 to 25% of the people that actually completed the road march. So I get back to my company area, and even the RIs were like, damn, you just beat 75% of the dudes. I'm kind of peacocking. <laughs> and they've got these dunk tanks full of ice and water, and I'm hot, I'm overheating. By this time, I'd been at ranger school so long, April had come and gone, and now I'm a summer ranger. So it's June, in late June in Georgia. So you put your forearms in these ice water tubs, and it's really, really nasty. Everybody's putting their forearms in it. I didn't care, I went straight. <laughs> put my head right in that water. And in kind of a creepy voice, uh, this because you're not supposed to be talking to the other ranger students, this guy comes up behind me, and I'm head in the water, completely oblivious to what's going on, just trying not to be a heat couch day. I hear, hey, Jaster, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the things you never heard me say. I'm sorry for talking trash about you for the first nine weeks that you were here. Because they all read about me. And they're like, well, good thing no women graduated because I don't want to go to a school that chicks can pass. He said, you beat me. You've helped me. And you're doing stuff that, look at all those people. And there was a whole line of people who didn't pass the road march. He's like, I'm sorry. I turn around, he's an E6. He's been in the Army for more than a day. He had just never worked with somebody, not for any bad reason. He didn't work with any incompetent women. He just didn't work with any women. And he didn't know. So that's the why. When people say, why would you start that school over? Why would you start after Chris and Shay went on and you got recycled? Why would you stay there? Because that young NCO still sends me text messages to ask how he should deal with certain, certain issues that he's having in his unit. Not gender related. Because he respects me as a leader before he didn't even respect me as a soldier. So that's the reason why you stay. That's the reason why you put yourself out there and you keep going. So before I move on to questions, and I, I wanna do that now, um, so start thinking. But before I move on to questions, I wanted to give you one more example of why you should accept the challenge, why you should go out there and try to influence change in your microcosm of a world, however big or small that is. People talk trash about me online all the time. I recently wrote an article for Task and Purpose, and if you read the comments, your face would turn red, and you would want to go for your fastest run ever, because it's amazing what people will say when they're sitting behind a keyboard. I love reading those comments, because if they make a comment, you can click on their name, go to their Facebook page, you can kind of look them up and see, oh, the only thing you ever did was ranger school, gotcha. But you can also respond to those people. So I ended up getting in an email discussion with one of these guys who literally must hate me. Like, my existence must make him want to puke because of the things he said about me online. And not just on this article, but on other articles. My husband got browbeaten by some other guy. Same article, hey, your husband must be a real wuss to allow you to do this. I mean, just saying, you guys saw the picture, right? Like, I would not call that man names. And I'm married to him. So my husband responds to him on the website. I'm like, mm -mm, no, you gotta back off, just calm down, talk to him individually. Well, my husband got in a conversation with one guy saying, how, how would you feel if this was your wife? How would you feel if this was your sister? And my husband had this great conversation. And I had another conversation with another hater, a keyboard warrior, saying, hey, um, did you think about it this way? Hey, dude, what's your deadlift? I got a 350 deadlift, man. It's like, it's kind of a good trump card that I can use with some of these guys. Uh, 
So, wait a minute, I could probably pick up a bigger dude than you could in combat? Ah, sucks to be you. But, you know, we were able to have this conversation, and granted, those were only two people, but those two people are leaders in our society, not just in our military, but they're leaders. They work somewhere. They work with women. They have daughters. They have spouses. Their impressions are now different. Both of those guys came back and deleted their comments on my Task and Purpose article. You can do something to change your world. You can improve your situation and those around you just by making an effort. So with that last message, I really want some questions. They don't have to be good, they just have to be asked. Because if I stand up here just staring, it'll look stupid. <laughs> wow. Great. Do I not have time? Kevin, Try and, where am I going? Sorry, now I've broken a mic. I'm really good at doing that. <laughs> I know, I think we're um, good. As a young female in the military, I think a lot of us have come into very similar things that you have. Um, oh, females are weak. Oh, they can't do that. What would you say is the best way to kind of approach that and prove ourselves in a way? So I... Are females weaker than men? Yes. Okay, yes. Anybody watching the Olympics? Those women are not cleaning and jerking the same as much as the men are. So are we built def differently? Yes. Do we have a different structure? Yes. That's okay. Is our strength critical to mission accomplishment? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. As a combat heavy engineer, does my deadlift impact my ability to be a good, I don't know, battle captain is what I'm working on right now. Nope, not one bit. So, so that's one thing. Now, if I want to be infantry, if I want to go to ranger school, that's a different story. Does my physical fitness matter? Yes. So here's where I go with that. Yes, females are the weaker gender, but can I meet the standard? Can I do the same things you can? Can I pass at the same level a male can? As 145, I'm going to tell the truth this time, so for people who listened to me earlier, I lied. I'm 145 pounds of twisted steel. <laughs> At 145 pounds, as a female, can I do the same physical work as a 145 pound male? Yes, I can, because I've been training it. So there are women in this world who physically can do a lot more than others because they want to, because it's important to them. And that's one group of women. There are women in this world who can physically train to be stronger. There are women in this world who, based on genetics, are going to be lighter, thinner, maybe not as physically fit or strong, but maybe they can run like the wind, or maybe they suck at everything physical, but they're smart as hell. So I go back to my base discussion point, which is delete the adjective. I don't want to be good for a female anything. I want to be the best for whatever it is I want to be. I don't want to be strong for a woman. I don't want to be good for a female engineer. I just want to be a good engineer. So whatever it is you want somebody working on, focus on the attributes that are critical for that job. I want to be a combat heavy engineer. Getting the ranger tab and being competitive with my male engineer peers was important to me. So it was something I worked on. And when people come up to you and say, well, women can't do what men can do. Well, some women can't. But some men can't either. Anybody know a small guy who just, he struggles on every ruck run? Anybody know an overweight guy or a, a bigger guy? We won't say overweight, because he might be a bodybuilder type, who just can't make that two mile run time, but he's fit as a fiddle in every other aspect? We are not all created equal, but it's not based on gender. It's based on our attributes. What were we built to do? I'm a little hoss. I can lift a lot of weight. I get that. Um, some people aren't. So when people say to you, hey, women aren't as strong as males, what male? Are you comparing me to my 260-pound Marine husband who played college basketball and played semi-pro volleyball? 
No, I'm never going to be as strong as him. I, I'd like to see anybody who is. I mean, he's, a, he's pretty tough. But are you going to compare me to this infantry soldier who's 140 pounds and is standing right next to me and I had to grab the 240 from him because he was dying on a ruck march? That's who I want you to compare me to. But make sure that you're comparing me on attributes that matter. Um, if my strength doesn't matter, then, then just let me do my job. And I think at the end of the day, that's really my answer to any question when it's about integration. I just want to do my job and I want to do the best job possible. So if it requires me to lift heavy stuff, then I'll lift heavy stuff. And if I can't lift that heavy stuff, then I need to find a job that I am capable of doing. It's probably not the answer you want, or maybe kind of a roundabout way, but at the end of the day, I say delete the adjective, take the, the best person for each job, and the attributes you have have to uh, align with the position you want to do. Do we have another question? Yes, ma'am. Trying here. I don't know where I'm going. Making Captain Robinson work over here. Obstacle course time. Exactly. So as a mother or just as a parent, we don't know the expiration date for, you know, the issues with gender roles and especially for women. How do you prepare your daughter for that reality? And what, what advice or what, how would you prepare her mentality to understand the culture that we currently live in? So I'm a bad example. Um, <laughs> And my daughter's an even worse example. So we're, my husband and I are going on an elk hunt and we, uh, we bow hunt in Montana. We do it every couple of years. And we're headed out there. My daughter wants to come shoot bows with us. And she does. But first I had to spend three hours wrapping her bow in pink mossy oak tape because she didn't like the brown bow. <laughs> so I've got this weird situation with my daughter where she is a complete tomboy that wants to wear a princess dress. And I think, I think that's awesome. I don't understand it, but I think it's awesome. So um, my daughter's four, she's, she's starting pre-K next week, and when I pick her up from daycare, two days a week I pick her up by myself and I'll run to go get her, and then she and I run home. It's .94 miles. And we do this run twice a week, she loves it. She gets to wear workout clothes to daycare and she's super excited on every Tuesday and Thursday. I told you I'm not normal. We were running back, God, it's already been, it's January, because she had to wear my hat because she was cold. So she has my little, I have a little army hat with the army seal on it, and she's wearing the hat, and she goes, hey, mommy, can boys be rangers too? <laughs> so in our world, our kids don't know any different, and I don't want them to. Eventually they'll figure it out. They'll realize that, that some things they're going to have to overcome. Both of them are gingers. They're both in jujitsu so that they don't get picked on when they go to middle school and high school. But, you know, they'll learn that stuff on their own. But I think it's harder for my husband than for me. Really pushing when we go play football with our son, we make sure we toss it to her a couple of times. Um, but it's just, it's a conscious effort of just not not pushing those biases on her, but I don't ever want to explain it to her. I'll, I'll let her figure it out. And what I'm finding by going around the US and talking to young groups, I recently talked to a bunch of ROTC kids. I mean, they, they look, they're so young. <laughs> some of them don't even get it. Like, they don't understand why it's an issue. They just, some of their ROTC female peers are now infantry lieutenants, and they don't get it. They don't get why my year group, battalion commanders, are so concerned about women and integration because the younger generation, it's just natural. And, and that'll continue to happen as we move forward. And yeah, like you said, we don't know what the expiration date is. Hopefully it's sooner rather than later. All right, we have time for one more question. No pressure. We got one up here. All right. Oh, and back there, sorry. So it sounds like you were already really physically fit when you started or when you went into this, which is excellent. What would you say was the most challenging part of it then? Was it just mental or was it the camaraderie, dealing with the males having low expectations of you? What would you say that was for you? Very interesting question. 
Yeah, so I, I will say if you decide you want to do anything, make sure you're properly prepared for it. So the physical aspects of it, I, I never questioned that I could physically do it. Um, the academics, I'm not sure how I'm so bad tactically, but there's some debate on that as well. Um, so the tactics were the issue why I kept getting recycled, but um, I advised and wrote the mission execution plan every single day for uh, almost everyone. So while I was there, I did a portion of the op board every single day, except twice where the uh, ranger instructors told me I could not do the planning for the young soldier who was in charge. So tactics, I think I'm actually probably a little better. Maybe I just had some issues on graded days. The biggest challenge I had wasn't getting my peers on board. It was when people are looking at me from the outside, you get one minute they're going to judge you. One minute that they're going to build that opinion, and then you have to run with that. So when you first meet a new group of soldiers, that, that initial impression that you give them is so critical. Well, there, because I recycled so many times, I got so many new squad mates. So I had to deal with that every time, is trying to figure out a quick way to not bond and be cohesive, but to let them know that I wasn't here to be offended, I wasn't thin-skinned, I didn't want them to change their world because I was present, but also the RIs. The ranger instructors come in every day and then go home every night, and those were the hardest people to, to demonstrate to that I just wanted to do my job. I just wanted to be a hard charge and ranger student, no adjective needed. And they not only had to go home at night, they not only cycled in and out, but they went home to the media, because we were away from the media. You know, after the guys saw me do the ruck march, after they saw me do six chin-ups without breathing heavy, you know, and pass them on the five-mile run, or run right next to them in the five-mile run, after I ran to chow with them every day, they, they didn't care anymore because we weren't exposed to all that BS that everybody got to hear in, in the States or you know, outside of the little hovel of ranger school. We had, but those ranger instructors had to go home and then come back. And then they heard everything that they heard from the media. They, they had to deal with people accusing them of being unprofessional. They had people saying, oh, you're letting them pass. You're letting them get away with this. You're doing this because some general officer told you you had to. And then they had to come back and be professional. So that was the hardest thing for me, is managing those relationships without being a major, without being anything more than scum of the earth, because that's all you are as a student. I had to prove myself every minute of every day. So where a lot of the guys, would do Y squats like this, I had to go all the way down every time. But one of the ways that helped me get through that, yeah, everybody see? Yeah, good form, right? Uh, but one of, the ways, one of the ways I got okay with that, because at first I'm like, oh, it sucks to be a woman here. You know, no, just that whole mental state of they're picking on me. I overcame that really quickly because I looked at the really tall guy and I worked, looked at the kind of heavy guy and I looked at the kind of skinny guy and they were getting the same amount of attention as I was because it was all about that extra attention, that extra hazing was all about the ranger instructors needing to believe that you belonged there, that you would be a productive member of the ranger community. That's what ranger school is. It's, it's weeding out the weak. And if they look at you and think you might be one of the weak, you get their special attention. And in this case, I was smaller of stature. I happened to be a female. I stuck out just as much as the six foot three guy did. And he and I got smoked just as much. So it was managing perception would be the number one hardest thing for me. And then the number two thing was getting in my mind that it wasn't me against the world. It was me managing the fact that I stuck out. So I definitely appreciate all your time. I will be around for a little bit longer. And if anybody is wondering, I don't mind taking pictures. So I think it's fun. I think it's great. And I love being here with everyone. So thank you. All right. Thank you.